Okay. We haven't played the Warlock in a while, so we'll throw a Warlock in here. And you know what? We're going to do Battle Fury. Melee Warlock. We made our second boss too hard. Did we, though? I mean, he is what he is. Basic melee attacks will do additional 50% damage in an area. Okay. So at least I'm doing splash damage. I could bring some skeletons into this. That seems like a warlock thing to do. I'm starting to remember like what the metagame now. You could bestow the ability to like summon skeletons on a skeleton and so your skeletons would summon skeletons and all sorts of nonsense would happen let's see increase the max limit of summons by whatever it's fine we're not going to overdo it on the summons because it is an OP strat and right now we're trying to make we want to do well, but we want, don't want to make an impossible boss for us. Because you've seen what's uh, it's done with the werewolf. Like, mid builds don't cut it anymore. <coughs> okay, let's see. Hunter increases attack speed. And that's kind of what we got going on with this. So, you know what? There we go. We are a, a hunter melee warlock. We've got this aura. I, we can share it with the skeletons. But we won't, like, quadruple down on the skeletons. I was like, their attack speed isn't going up. That's because I don't have the Hunter bonus yet. This turns the Hunter bonus into an aura. So we need to get another Hunter skill in here. I also don't want to lose my basic attack. I may have, may have made a mistake here. We'll figure it out. It's hard for me to push through the skeletons. Let's see. Increase spell cast. That doesn't help me with... Oh, hey, you can get that in there. Increased spellcast doesn't help me with melee attacks. And I've kind of committed. I don't have to do this, but I'm doing it. I'm just part of the herd. But I'm the worst part of the herd. get two hunters auras on 
and that might be the play. That would get our hunter skill way up there. If we can get the skeleton attack speed up really high, it's a good broken build. Like a broken stat strat that we could just double down on. But not so broken that like it, it gives us uh, an impossible boss. I like where my head's at. Get him, boys. Am I going to lose all my skellies? See, now that is the flaw of the build. Once the skeletons are dead, they're gone. What can I do there? Passive abilities, maybe? I can get guns, but those are... Those are bullets. I think passive abilities might be a key here. To keep us on our basic attack kick. skeletons back everything's back to normal Hmm. Hmm. We get the passive storm in there. Or do I sell the passive storm and get this? I s oof, oof. I sell the passive storm. I get that. More damage. And give all battle cry. I mean, we're kind of. Kind of that way. We're a barbarian necromancer. That's what we are. Like if I can push past all my skeletons to do damage, it's a bad time for them. They don't know who to attack. If my skeletons go down, you know what? I'm just doing fine. Uh, let's see. When my summon creature dies, deal damage in the area. Yeah, we'll do that. But not before we do the offensive battle cry. Your mother reeks of elderberries. Ooh, that's going to get our melee up. All the way. That might be a new record. Level 3 ability at level 14. I got guess it's got to be level 15 because we won't get it in one swoop. It just occurred to me that this is about the same build as the first boss. We're a little better at it because we're actually Warlock. Alright, yeah, we're just gonna freeze that. We'll get the thing. It'll be fine. Why did I slow down? for the heck of it. 
I still need to get some more hunter's abilities in here. But getting those without actual projectiles or skills is going to be weird. Physical attacks do fire? I mean, that's pretty good. 80% added fire damage. Basic melee attack will deal additional 200% in an area. Yeah, I think we do fire damage now. That's a thing. He would also do lightning damage. So let's just add all the the passive damage boosts. We can get the one that does frost damage too. That would be neat. And then we just do all the elemental damage. We do elemental strikes. Your skeletons are gone. Mine are still here. What are you going to do about it? Slowly die. Hey, it's the, the elemental frost damage. Okay. You've got a theme. I'm gonna get rid of the spirit of vengeance. We don't need it anymore. I, I could get rid of the hunter's aura. I might. Like it's just getting in the way at this point. Like we don't actually have a hunter aura. think about it. We'll consider it. We'll keep it for now. Say that. Then I'm going to get rid of it at the first possible chance. Additional 200% damage in the area. I assume that's all physical? Like, it doesn't say, but like, if Battle Fury doesn't do physical damage... Uh, I don't know what to believe anymore. Okay. Launch a melee strike. Benefits from increase increases to frost, fire, and lightning damages. Okay, it's gonna it's gonna get weird here. Getting rid of these guys. We're gonna, we're gonna try lots of different stuff. I think I saw something about the curse of elements. Normal attack damage. Basic melee. Like, see, this wouldn't be a basic melee attack anymore. So I don't think I want this. I think I need frost damage in here. We do all the damage. We're just basic as hell. Yeah. Did you see how, like, the left half of the group just died instantly? If we get in range, they're dead. Combat skills cast an additional time. We don't need that. 
We don't cast here. Get him, boys. It's okay, so friendly units get plus 50% physical damage. And I see that icon over my head, so I get it too. I am the most friendly. I am friendly with myself. At least once a day. I'm a wholesome channel. More lightning damage. What other passive things can I throw on myself is what I want to know. Let me in. Skeleton boys, let me in. It's so mild, too. Like, I, I wander in there and everyone just falls over. Like, there's no loud thud. I feel like there should be, like, a boom. At some point, I might get rid of the skeletons. Is that crazy? See, they're doing a hundred damage. I walk in, and I do a couple thousand. It's hard to see. Seven thousand. Okay, so if I got rid of the skeletons, like I could just add more percents on. I'm doing it. Uh, buy skeletons. Here's some more lightning damage. Uh, enhance attack. After casting a skill, your next basic atta attack does 150% damage. They're performing the next skill I cast does 100% damage. It okay. Uh, it's kind of weird, because the only skill I cast is this one that boosts my damage. And does that boost the damage that this would boost back to me? Shrug. Alright, here I come. Boom. Boom. Smack. It looks stupid. It's effective. Uh, what do we do? Just level up? Just grab the basic damage boosts and just do nothing but basic attacks. This is the most demure and mindful build I've ever seen in my entire life. Berserker? 
That'll work. Increase damage as health is low, and health will get low. I believe, eventually. I think everyone's getting double tapped by the combat ability. I could release my... change my basic attack to a bow, but I'm worried that would get rid of... Basic melee attacks deal an additional damage in an area. So we're not doing that. Stick with the plan. Doink. Doink. This is the dumbest build that's ever worked. On a character that has nothing to do with it. on your left. I, I've got no skills. Skills are for suckers. This is just basic attack. The crazy thing is it does more damage to the people I'm not hitting. Hit. Like, the guy who gets the, the main hit gets 8,000, and the person behind him gets double that. Physical damage is considered chaos and is increased. Ooh, but if I get that, then I think physical damage skills uh, might not count anymore. Ooh, but we could get a lone wolf. Increased by 42%. I got so many good skills already. Alright, tell you what, I'm gonna grab Lone Wolf. Oh! I had room to put something out there. And notice I became level 7. If I put down another combat skill, then I can triple tap people. And they will die even faster. Who's level 30 here? Uh, okay. I grab you. Uh, this would get me nothing. That wouldn't boost any of my skills. But you know what? I'm gonna throw down the Berserker. Because that will boost up my combat. So I can triple tap. And I'm hoping I can out DPS the werewolf. Should be possible. Yeah. Like he's not getting the brunt of it. But it's gonna keep going up the, the more damage he does to me. And so even if we're on par, I should come out ahead. There we go. Grab more Battle Fury? I think I should. Just whatever basic skills I get. I'm sorry for the most dull gameplay you've ever seen in your life. I'm having fun. As long as I'm having fun, that's all that matters, right? We don't have to sit here in silence. We can hang out. We can chat. Tell me what's going on in your day. I 
I said that. There's actually nobody watching. That's fine. I took this L today on purpose. I said, what do I want? And then I went and got it. Like, this is my Metro Man moment. Everyone's like, why aren't you playing Dave the Diver? And I'm like, Ugh, there will always be another Dave the Diver. It doesn't have to be me. You've been looking at uh, buildings with this in the background, lol? Checking in occasionally, like a minute ago, with the boss? Yeah. I'm glad you're having a good time. Right, you're looking at buildings. Are you doing that thing where you you look at houses that you wish you had? Every now and then I go uh, house shopping in Montana. And everything is a thousand times out of my price range. And I get real sad. Because I miss my homeland. I'd like to go back up to the frozen uh, wasteland. But it's become a retirement community and I can't hang out there anymore. Like they've driven up the property values way too high. So like once my family uh, finally dies, they're working on it. There will be no more sugar hearts left in the mountains. Architectural styles. But also houses, yes. Nice. Now, I can think of a dozen reasons why you would look at architecture, architectural styles. Are you in school for architecture? Or are you an artist looking for reference materials? Either way, it sounds kind of fun. I think that would kill me if I was an artist. Uh, I would get so obsessed with trying to find like a picture similar to the thing I want to draw and I would get in like uh, an infinite loop of just looking at pictures for for weeks possibly months and I would never actually draw the thing I'd be like Man, I want to draw this facial expression, but I can't quite articulate it. It's kind of like a horrified, minor, normal thing. Not necessarily an artist, but you like learning about architecture. Usually connected to some history or culture. Yeah. That was one of the things I wish I appreciated more when I was playing Elden Ring. Because, like, the different, like, factions throughout history in that game had, like, a different architectural style. So, like, there, there were, like, the Ancient Ones, and then there was, like, the City of Nock, and... I want to say there was something about Ur... And like their their regions would kind of like overlap, and the different architectural styles would be like right next to each other. But if you had a keen enough eye, you'd be like, okay, this was clearly built by this faction, which explains why these enemies are here. It's also kind of nice to just kind of think about your dream home. Weird thing I always wanted was oh ooh. all damage ideal fluctuates between one and two hundred and seventy five percent. That would be cool if I did damage fast enough. But it is another hunter ability, but I don't have the the other thing, man. I think that's what drew you to Elden Ring. You uh, you think the first thing you saw the game. 
you actually saw was Volcano Manor. Yeah. Volcano Manor had a really awesome architecture to it. Did you play Elden Ring? Because if you didn't play Elden Ring, then it is like a great thing to watch like lore videos on. There's some guy, I want to say his name's Vadi Vidya. And he he just talks calmly as he play or as he walks through like the entire story. And it's all these things that you would never pick up on. Your computer is a bomb, so no. Uh, Elden Ring, surprisingly enough, did a really good job at, like, optimizing. So, like, you'd be surprised. I got it to run on, like, an eight-year-old computer. Like, I'm not sure I recommend trying, but, but it can be done. Okay, what do I need? Uh... Frost bonus, lightning projectiles. Gain one physical damage per shield. I don't have shield. So we just double down on basic attack. Alright, my numbers are bigger now. Got eight skills down here. I've got room for one more. I get another combat skill, then I'm quadruple tapping people. Yeah, you might get it when uh, next available to see the gigabytes count scared you off. That's fair. And honestly, you shouldn't listen to me and just do whatever you want anyway. Not that you would listen to me. Elden Ring's not the sort of thing like you you should feel pressured into playing. You should play it because you want to play it. And I think you might have fun with it. But I've known a lot of people who are like, I want to play it because the hype's so good, it's got to be the best game ever, and then they play it, and they have a miserable time. And then they blame me for it. And I'm like, okay, fair. It is entirely my fault. Ooh, the soul stone, maybe? Every time I cast an act of... No, we're just going to keep up with the physical damage. We want to rush the highest level as fast as possible. A hot take for me is I didn't like the DLC for Elden Ring. I did play it all the way through. But, like, Elden Ring has kind of like a, a power creep problem. Like, you get so strong, it takes a lot to stop you. And so they they did their best. And they made, like, the final boss of the DLC, insanely powerful. And like, just almost cheaty. Like, he never stops attacking, so you can't do any attacks. Or like, have any cast time. You only played Dark Souls 1 before and couldn't get past the first 10 minutes? Yeah. Heard Elden Ring was more difficult. Well, it can be. The good thing about Elden Ring is you've got options. Like, you can wander off and level up. So, like, if you find a place that you're having a difficult time with, you can just leave and come back later. You can grind levels, you can make yourself stronger, you can check out other areas. Like, there are whole bosses that I, I avoided on my first playthrough just... Because I'm like, I, I don't know how to deal with them. And I did fine. Those bosses were rune bears. Like, I would fight a dragon any day of the week. But a rune bear? Good lord. 
you remember being there at the end. The end was so interesting. That's right, you were there for the, the final fight. I guess spoil it for the people who haven't got there or might want to. But man, it felt unfair. Okay. Am I doing enough damage here? I am. I'm gonna get through this. But you can see how ridiculous that build work looks compared to what I'm doing. Like I'm just doing a single attack. And this is the screen filled up with fireballs and blades and arrows. That was crazy. It's crazy that I was able to beat that. But yeah, I was kind of lucky that in Elden Ring, uh, my build wasn't too far off from something that could beat the the end of the game. There was like three dominating strategies and that's it. I mean, you could theoretically be amazing. Like the let me solo her guy. And just do fine. But for the rest of us normies... Like, you had to do one of the three things that could win. Or better yet, a combination of a couple of them. These guys keep standing too far apart. It's really hurting my basic attack strategy here. But once I hit level 9, it's all over. problem with like the warlock doing this bit is that the warlock is one of the broken characters and so if if I waste her and she becomes the boss I can't play with her again and so I've lost a really good character it's a little heartbreaking but we'll be fine Okay, we've we've leveled up again. And throw in Lone Wolf. That would give me more warrior. AoE skills have more damage and rain. I don't do skills, so I think Lone Wolf might actually be something I skip. What if Do I get the basic attack thing in there? What if I just buff myself twice, does that work? That would give me Druid and Warlock. What does Warlock get me? Helps my summon. So Warlock sucks for me. I could get one... Sorry. Uh... Hmm. Let's get Enhanced Attack. Let's give that a shot. Ooh, let's level it up immediately. And then give it a better shot. <laughs> when I die, come back, maybe? I'm gonna stick with an enhanced attack. Better freeze on that.
think I'm doing more damage? It's hard to tell. I know most of FromSoft's uh, software DLC takes place in a certain pocket or dream, but you don't think it was done as well in Elden Ring with everything considering. Could be wrong. Uh, they did some things really well. Like, in they they had this entire new... Oh, how, how can I say this? Uh, they had a new... I'm going to grab Gambler. Sorry, getting distracted. Cannot deal damage when not landing a critical hit. But my critical hit chance would be 30%. That could be good. It's not good now, but it could be. I think we slap Lone Wolf in there just for a general damage boost. Uh, they, they had this bit where you had to get your own special levels just for the DLC area. Like the Skidoo tree fragments and the spirit ash thingies. And so... It, playing the DLC was kind of like starting the game over again. And a lot of people complained it was so hard because like their their old build wasn't working anymore. The thing is like it would work fine. You just need to like try harder. Uh let's see. Ask skill spend pre uh None of these are good. And so like People, people complained a lot about the difficulty, despite it not being really different or even unusual. Let's get that. Get some lone wolf in here. I don't know if I'm going to use the gambler abilities, but I'll have them. Wow. Everyone just fell over. What happened? Is it because I got Lone Wolf in here? I think it might be because I got Lone Wolf in here. That apparently was a good call. probably do doppelgangers and it would be nice. It just destroyed two waves of people. The only thing you remember well lore-wise is that the DLC landmass connects the massive gap in the main game. Oh! Like it fits where, where that gap is. That makes sense. Interesting. See, now I have to go look up videos again and learn things. All right, uh, getting more Gambit. Additional 50 per... Okay, we're grabbing that. So you're making me need to, like, go look up all the videos again. Surely there's been more uncovered and discovered. Once the game was done, I kind of abandoned it, and I'm like, I'm, I'm glad it's over. I don't have to think about this again. Like, I was a little upset. It was a lot of work. 
and the payoff didn't feel good. Like, there's a new uh, Souls-like game out right now, Black Myth Wukong, and everyone's having a great time playing it, and I'm like, I'm, I'm still burnt out from Elden Ring. I can't play that game again. Yeah, you saw fan restoration. Pretty sure there's uh, a tower that hints to it. Yeah. That makes sense. It's all coming together. Alright, who's at level 60? It's the rogue, isn't it? Got a couple of physical golems. I'll take them out fast. And I think I do enough damage that I can take her out fast. We're just gonna have to see. We just commit to what we got. Wukong the Monkey King, that's the guy! He's got his magical stick and everything. Like, there's probably a lot of lore and a lot of story crossover. The story's been told enough times that I, I'm kind of tired of it by now. Like, the Monkey King's been in so many video games. Like, the, he he's a trope. Like, he is Goku. Like, he's been Goku, he's, uh, he's Sansan the Monkey in Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I, like, I'm drawing some blanks here, but I know he's in everything. Oh, was it the rogue ability that pushed me over the top here? It's the new critical strikes. Gotcha. Lone Wolf was a good investment. Some more lightning hits. Oh, but lightning's already maxed out. I don't know. We can max it out again. But yeah, apparently the game's really good. Like, the, the enemies are crazy. You can transform into, like, other people. He was neat when you first heard of him. Uh, branches too far in recognition, though. Covers up a lot, arguably. Just as interesting, if not more myths than legends. Yeah. But yeah, if I played what I should be playing, I'd probably be playing that right now. Actually, for my channel, I should be playing... Oh, what is it? Uh, Fields of Mystria. Most people want me to play the, the adorable cozy games, and you know, they're that's fair. Let's see, 80% plus 100, or I do more, uh, more rogue stuff. Okay, well, this is about the same, isn't it? Here. I'll just get that again. I'm concerned we're about to go up against the rogue. Like we're doing a lot of damage. That was kind of the rogue's gimmick too. It reminds me, I heard I didn't like Nightingale. Uh, I 
It's hard to say I didn't like it because I didn't play it. I didn't think it was ready. I still check on it regularly to see if it is good yet. But I don't think it was ready for release. And I want to play it. But I just don't think it's there yet. There's a lot of like survival crafting games that came out before I think they were ready. And Nightingale was one of those. Like Return, Return to Moria might have just come out on Steam. That's a good example too. Six out of ten stars better than three. That's fair. All skills are now affected by the combat set bonus. I don't have any skills. In real life either. Oh, my hand is full. What can I get rid of? Not using deadly rhythm. And then there's fire strike. So I can start getting rid of Gambler. There we go. But yeah, like Return to Moria, uh, Enshrouded, Nightingale. They were all games that like, I feel wanted to be the next Valheim, but I feel like there was this huge flaw. They were like, Valheim released in early access. That's just what you do. And so they release these things and they're unfinished. Either because they didn't have the money to like just keep working at it or or whatever. And so like they had these bomb releases because the game came out before it was good enough. And I still want to play him. Like, I love the idea. I love the concept. But, like, the combat's dumb. The building's dumb. The world's dumb. It's too short. Too easy. Too hard. Like, they just didn't cook long enough. But, like, I still keep an eye on them. I'm still watching them, like, waiting for the day they become super good. Like, Conan Exiles came back after many, many years and got way better. Speaking of which, Dune Awakening, I'm super excited for. They finally did, like, a, an actual gameplay demo of it at uh, Gamescom in Germany. And it is basically Conan Exiles, but with guns and with Dune. And it looks amazing. I really want to play it. Thought Dune only has a board game? Uh, currently, uh, I think there are Dune video games, but I don't think they were any good. Like maybe for like Atari. There's probably some mobile games that came out with the movies because those are cheap and easy. But I didn't pay any attention to those. There is Dune Awakening. Which got announced, like, I think at some point when they started making the new movies. And uh, it looks good. Pretty sure it was made by the uh, same people who made... AGOT software. AGOT software. AGOT. Why am I drawing a blank on that one? Sorry, the acronym's not coming up. The AGOT shovelware. Cheap games uh, of a uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah. Game of Thrones had some some cheap games. I think they had like a Telltale game that might have been okay. I don't know. You kind of have to be in the mood to play one of those Telltale games. But the only one I really liked was The Walking Dead. 
Though I bet Tales from the Borderlands is probably pretty good. It's just that when Borderlands is on the mind, that's not what I'm playing. I'm playing actual Borderlands. That guy dodged a lot of my hits, and I'm not sure how I feel about that. Get back to gambling, thinking about it. More fire. Telltale The Walking Dead is good. Never uh, got to experience MC1, which I heard was good. MC1. Minecraft? Is there a Telltale Minecraft? What am I thinking of? There's something about, like, the big bad wolf, too. Like, some kind of detective mystery that rings a bell that I heard was great. I think that's the one they released before The Walking Dead. I'm getting some real big numbers in here. <laughs> I'm really worried that my math will just be slightly off at one point. Like, I'm not doing the math. But if I, like, pick the wrong skill or sell the wrong skill, like, the whole thing will just fall apart. Keep Gambler out of here. I think I've got enough. I will get Lone Wolf, though. They had uh, Batman, you know that? Arkham Asylum? That was... So... They got, like, the Arkham Asylum guy... Guys. And they made them make Suicide Squad. And I feel like the pub publishers basically told them not to do another Arkham Asylum and instead do a looter shooter because they thought it would make more money. And the weird thing is they actually made a decent game, but everyone was upset because it's not the game they wanted. Like Suicide Squad was fun, but like, it, I don't know, I think WB Warner Brothers, as publishers, really suck. They're really pushy, and they tell, like, their developers to put some, like, really bad ideas in their game, you know, for the money. And it gets horrible backlash. Like, uh, one example would be, like, Shadow of War, right? So, like, Monolith Games releases this game. Uh, Shadow of Mordor, they... It, it did great. No one kind of expected it to. And so they're like, okay, we get to make a sequel now. And then all of a sudden in the sequel, there's like microtransactions, but they don't really make sense. And it seems like nobody actually wants them there. The developers tried to make them not matter. But even then, everybody like downvoted the game a million times over. Until finally they took it out. That's a, like, that's the sort of thing that m makes it look like caving to to publisher pressure. Oof! Oh, it's so close! Oh, you got me! It's all right. We can get him need to level up the right things in the right order. I could drop something and add something else. I'm wondering if Battle Fury more Battle Fury. 80%. 
Physical damage skills, 160, 160, 80. Good numbers. Like, I think I might need to get rid of Berserk. I don't think it's helping us enough. And so if we get, say... I don't know, more Battle Fury in here? Think that might work? Alright, we got the double, triple Battle Fury. <laughs> Everything's still real dumb in here. Get more ice damage. Get rid of you. I want you. And we will just wait patiently. They made Telltale Skybound. Uh, did Skybound make Suicide Squad? No, I thought the Arkham guys made S Suicide Squad. I don't know if the Telltale guys made Suicide Squad. You have mixed feelings. You think the over mixed feelings on it? You think the overreaction was unnecessary, but the execution was awful. That's fair. Yeah, see, just a slight mess up. on the build and I make problems for myself. So I need to not put more basic attack in there. But I do. What do I do? Here. Get rid of the extra lone wolves. We get Super Battle Frost, right? We get a Soul Stone. We might throw that in. But first, we're going to try extra Lightning Damage. Alright, I hope this is good. I think I'm doing more damage. Oh, you think you got confused? That's fair. It, it's, I mean, we're talking about like the, the side of games like people don't often see. It's very confusing. Come on. Do the numbers. Get a crit. Nope. I have one more shot at this. Here's what I'm going to do. I think we have to bring the soul orb into it. When I die, revive with 100% health. That's the thing I have to do. Normal attack, damage, blah. I mean, that's what I got. I don't want to get rid of that, but it didn't feel like it made enough of a difference. Alright, I'm going to... Get rid of one of these. Oof, it's a triple though. I'm gonna get rid of that. Get a soul stone in there. Throw some soul stones on my soul stones. And this is it. This is the last chance I have to be somebody. The damage isn't that much lower. But now, I will resurrect at full health when... This is all over. And so it is okay if you kill me, sir. It's going to be really annoying when I fight her as a boss. Like, she's going to be doing so much damage to me. And then when I come back, or when I kill her, she's just going to pop right back up.
terrifying. Now I can't find any of the skills I want. Fire. That'll work. Is there an ending to this? Yeah, floor 100. So every 75 levels you replace a boss and then you have to start over from scratch and beat that boss. I'm trying to beat the game in one night here. But the problem was like the first time I played it I came back and uh or, or I kept doing like overpowered combos or discovering things that worked too well. And so like I kept making bosses that were really hard for me to beat. That's why this time I'm trying to do real stupid builds that aren't impossible to get around. Like, this build obviously has some serious flaws. Like, when you're doing one-on-one, -on -one, it's struggling. It's a lot of damage. But not that much. So you have to... You have to just break the mold by the margins exactly. And so there, there's a couple of, like, really, really good strategies that I'm not even trying... Because I know they're too good. <laughs> and I can't... Can't go that route. Or one random summon creature... Is that... Hmm? One random summon creature's attack is increased 100. When you receive a buff, it will be copied to the creature. Neat? There's a, a couple of strategies. There's the giant bear strategy. Where you can just be a giant bear. Uh, who gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And he just has a ridiculous health pool. Does a lot of damage. Like, it's basically this strategy, except with health. Uh, you can get shields on that regenerate faster than just about anybody can do damage to them. That's another really good strategy. But the best strategy is the revive strategy. Uh, where, like, you resurrect, like, a random dead thing you killed. But bosses count in that. So, like, you could beat a boss, you resurrect them, and then they just become your minion. And so, like, by the time you're at the end of the game, you're walking around with, like, the, the three last bosses you killed. Who have entirely ridiculous broken builds like this one. And that's just way too overpowered. All right, this is it. I have to win this one fight immediately. I'm not gonna use Gambler. Give me something. Nope, what I've got is what I've got. Let's see. Can I be the dragon? Please tell me he's weaker than the last guy. Uh. Yeah. It looks like I'm going to win. As long as I can get his health below half before I die. It's actually kind of close.
Am I doing a million damage? I think I am. There we go. Here we go. This is an absolute horrifying boss to have here. Okay. So now if I view my save here, we're going to get another person at level 90. Then another person at level 100. And then I think you have to beat it with like one more person. <laughs> 